how do I obtain tranquility? Mu'minin and mu'minat. Very simple. But it needs big hearts to achieve it. It needs determined personality to achieve it. It needs purposeful personality to achieve it. You see how you are determined with your life? Give Allah less than quarter of that and it's enough. You spent from 8 to 9 or from 8 to 5 at work. Well, Islam doesn't expect you to give all that to Allah. And sometimes you go that 5, 7, 8 hours in a day, you come back empty hand. I promise you, if you give Allah less than quarter of what you give to your life, you will come back full hand. Why can't we make Allah priority in our lives? Young and old. The first response is a natural response. And it's a very simple response. This response is that. You need always, now and then, reflect and go back to yourself. Tadabur, tafakkur, pondering, reflecting, thinking. Seclude yourself for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Do self introspection. Why? Remember, the Allah default setting is love for perfection in you. That love for perfection, you remember? I mentioned it, and last night I repeated it. That is Allah's default setting in you. If you don't seek Allah as a means of perfection, then you are a little bit going against your primordial nature, your fitra. I'm going to demonstrate that for you, just to make things very clear. You see, in San, Right from the womb of his mom, he seeks perfection. In son, Muslim, non Muslim, Shia, it doesn't matter really. In son, as in son, right from the womb of mom, begin to seek perfection. How? You see, when a baby is in the womb of the mother, the moment the baby has two hands and two legs, what does the baby do in the womb? Moves around. Mother's no bear. The baby moves around. <laughs> what is that? Perfection. And when the baby becomes a real baby in the womb, the baby tends to realize that the womb is not enough. Need more than that. Sometimes mom cannot sleep. The baby will be going up and down in the womb. Now baby arrives here, still yearning for perfection. Start crawling. When the baby, baby immerses in crawling, the baby will then start trying to stand on its feet. Yearning for perfection. Because crawling not enough. I need to stand now. Perfection. Now when the baby begins to stand, begin to move, pull televisions, pull these things, yearning for perfection, that's inside. That's the default setting. This is not just for the sake of the baby doing it. It's to tell us that our nature is to seek perfection. Now baby now walking, then the baby will start to express itself. Talking, speaking. Learn from our children. They are yearning for perfection. Then you will go for education, you know, you become big short like the way I mentioned last night. Still yearning for perfection. And that is what scholars mention. If Allah would give permission to our fitra, primordial nature to speak, we will all hear the fitra saying, we are the lovers of perfection. Where is the way to perfection? Yani every insan in you, there is that boiling, you boiling for perfection. And as Imam Khomeini Kadasallahu Nafsahu Zakiya, he mentioned that. Oh, insan, 
go back to the book of your fitra and analyze your essence of fitra you will realize that it is written there on your fitra ayah 79 of surah al-an'am inni tawajjahtu wajhi lilladhi fatara samawati wal arda hanifa the point is trying to make that if you will go back to your senses you realize that you cannot settle without wholeheartedly submitting to your maker so the point i'm trying to make is very simple point that indeed if i and you are determined to obtain tranquil soul you need tafakkur and tadabbur you need to spend some time reflecting it could be this what others call meditation so in islam we have sort of meditation not the way other people do but we have it also whether you sit you ponder you reflect you switch off a little bit from the busy life you can obtain that don't you see if sometimes you sit and you close your eyes for a few seconds how do you feel you feel good sometimes when you switch off the lights you sit in one corner just reflect alone for a few minutes you feel good so the point i'm trying to make is that if you truly want to obtain tranquil soul first and foremost go back to your normal and original setting that is you are yearning for perfection it's quranic injunction how quran tells us to obtain tranquil soul the ayah i quoted quran 13 verse 28 you see in that ayah allah is saying you can only obtain tranquil soul through his remembrance through the zikr of allah we'll look at it later what is that zikr of allah but i want to demonstrate something here look at this allah beautifully those of you who know arabic you will understand this so if you analyze the ayah allah bring the fi'il the subject that is that my in after the zikr it's object and subject what does it mean it means hasra it means exclusivity it means hey without remembering your lord you cannot obtain tranquil soul it will become cumbersome to have nafsul mutma'inna without god here so look at how we're going to demonstrate it a, a scholar a great scholar really analyzed this and this is really fascinating so you look at things that allah created and he compared until he reached peace and tranquility how he said when i analyze the relationship between iron and fire i came to a conclusion that iron can easily be dissolved and melted by fire so my conclusion is fire is stronger than iron that's one then he went ahead he said then i looked at iron and water so i analyzed the relationship between the two then i let a look water is stronger than fire fire water is stronger than fire because no matter what the fire you just pour water the fire is gone <laughs> then he continued to say i want you to just pay attention there's a point here which is very beautiful point that now water is strong but when i compare the relationship between water and cloud i realize that no cloud pushes water so cloud becomes stronger than water he then went ahead to say i then compare the relationship between cloud and air then i let that know air pushes cloud then i came to a conclusion that air is stronger than the cloud he went ahead he said then i analyzed the relationship between air and mountain then i realized that look mountain can contain air so then i came at the conclusion that mountain is stronger 
than the air. He went ahead. He said, no, then I went ahead and I analyzed the relationship between mountain and insan. Then I came to a conclusion that indeed insan, it may be very tiny and small, but stronger than the mountain. But no, he said, I went ahead again with my research and I compared the relationship between insan and gnome sleeping. Then I realized that sleeping is more stronger than insan himself. Then he said, no, I went ahead again and analyzed the relationship between sleeping and worries, problems, issues, difficulties. Then I realized whenever I had issues, problems, I would not be able to sleep. Hence, worrying are more stronger than sleeping. Look at the last one. That's the point I'm trying to arrive. So then, I analyzed the relationship between worrying and tranquility and peace. Then I realized that whenever I have a peace, the worries are not there anymore. So Allah said, Allah bi zikri Allah tatma'innul kulub. With the remembrance of Allah, the heart find peace. Irrespective of the problem, if there is peace at heart, you tend to forget about it. Isn't it? Why don't you work for that? Why are we not striving for that? For what Islam is calling us for. Now question. What is this zikr? What is this remembrance of Allah? That Allah is saying without it, you'll not obtain tranquility. You'll not obtain peace. Remembrance of Allah, brothers and sisters, mean two things. Meaning ma'rifatullah wa adamun nisyan. It means, one, knowledge about your creator. Two, not forgetting about your creator. To what extent do you know Allah? When I say Allah, I mean in his existence. That's zikr. You know how comfortable you are at work? Because you know it by heart. If, if you do know it, you strive to perfect the knowledge. Why not about God? Why God is secondary in our lives? Zikrullah bima'ana ma'rifatullah. To remember Allah meaning to know God. You know what? If you do not make things priority in your life, you will not find it. If Allah is secondary to us, so it looks simple. With the remembrance of Allah, I find peace. But Ya Allah, I pray every day. I fast every day. I recite Quran. Do you know what you are praying? Do you know what you are fasting for? Do you know the verse? We need to have a ma'rifatullah. The way you strive for your livelihood, you need to strive to know Allah. And you know very well, I don't want to take too much because I want to digress a little bit at the end. 